This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're very fortunate tonight to have as our guest the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Alabama, Governor Will Ainsworth. Will's a young man, but he's already Lieutenant Governor of Alabama, and we're glad he took time out of his busy schedule to be with us. He's got his good aide, Jess Skaggs, with him, who's a Montgomery, because most of you viewers in the River Region, and uh, y'all love politics, so you like having Lieutenant Governor on. Will, thank you for being with us. Yeah, Steve, great to be on the show. Um, Obviously, you know, excited about what's going on in our state. A lot of exciting things going on. Uh, you mentioned excited to have Jess Skaggs as our deputy chief of staff, and he's done a tremendous job. But uh, honored to be lieutenant governor, and uh, look forward to talking to you today. I want to thank you for what all you've done for our state. I know you've served, and you do a great job uh, writing a good column for our state, too. you got a TV show. You've had a big impact, and, you know, know politics as well as anyone. So appreciate all you do. I know my mom certainly enjoys <laughs> reading your article in the Sam Mountain Reporter up in uh, my part of the world. I'm from you know, Marshall County, grew up in Boaz, live in Gunnersville now, but good to be on the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I've followed your career, and uh, I met your mama for the first time at your uh, inauguration thing, uh, and she hugged my neck, says, I've been reading your column for years. And I said, well, I'm proud of Will. Will, uh, you uh, were born, were you born and raised right there in, in Marshall County? Yes, I was actually born in uh, Homewood, lived there for a year in uh -huh. Birmingham, then moved up to Boaz when I was one. And uh, So all your life from one year old? Yeah, lived in Marshall County. You so. young man, you're just 39 years old. Yeah, I'm old now, just like you. I know you just had a birthday. <laughs> I just turned 40, so I'm, I'm getting real old now. So uh, can't say I'm 39 anymore. Do you know, Will, you know, you uh, talking about being in your 30s. Uh, back in the old days when I first started following politics, our governors were in their 30s when they were elected. You know, George Wallace and John Patterson were in their 30s when they were elected governor. And, of course, Lurleen was, was only 39 when she was elected. Uh, of course, she ran on George's coattails. But all of our governors, they called old, old John Patterson the boy governor because he was in his 30s. And... Uh, but, you know, people are older now, I guess. People live longer and everything. And, uh, but you, you're the only young uh, statewide office holder. I mean, you know, all the rest of them are like me, uh, you know, up in age and been around a while. But if anybody says who's the brightest star on the political horizon, the first person they say is Will Ainsworth because you are Lieutenant Governor of Alabama at th in your 30s and... Uh, you know, so we don't have any, any, and Katie Britt running for the Senate is an outstanding young person. Uh, but so you grew up in public schools there in, in Marshall County. Yeah, I went right to there. Boaz. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, back then, I don't know, you probably remember, but we were known for the shopping outlets in Boaz. I remember that, yeah. Had over a million people a year that would come to Boaz. And, you know, um, kind of the big thing growing up in Boaz, believe it or not, was people would cruise around the outlets, you know, and so that's what, uh, that was fun to do in Boaz growing up, but uh, you know, played sports. Uh, you know, growing up, loved that. I uh, loved the outdoors, hunting, and you know, my dad and I had a lot of good memories growing up going to South Alabama. I grew up hunting of all places, Camden, which is where <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Governor Ivy's from and uh -huh. Jeff Sessions, and so. But I grew up hunting there, and then um, you know, after uh, high school, went to Auburn, and uh, got my degree in marketing. And for me, it was always an easy decision to go to Auburn. That's where Dad went. And, you know, most boys kind of want to emulate their dad, and so uh -huh. you know, he got his degree in marketing. And that's what I ended up majoring in as well. Will, did you play what sports? Did you play at, at Boaz? Did you go to Boaz High School? I did. Yeah, I went to Boaz, and uh -huh. so uh, basketball. Boaz is not the biggest county in the in town. In the county though, Gunnersville was the biggest county. Is it? Uh, so in Marshall County, you know, the biggest city would be Albertville. Albertville right? biggest. You that's know, what it's the got about twenty thousand. That's right. You know, they're actually a seven A school right now. That's right. And then at Boaz, you know, where I went was between a four and five A school. We live in Gunnersville now. It's a 5A school. Um, and uh -huh. so, you know, played basketball, played golf, played tennis, played baseball. So it's, uh, you know, then high school had to cut out some of the spring sports. But, yeah. Uh, you yeah. got to limit it, you know. Right. Oh, yeah, no doubt. So. I had to do the same thing. Then, uh, but we were, what would y'all hunt down in Camden? Uh, Whitetail deer. So uh -huh. it was, uh, you know, back then that was, uh, you know, I guess started hunting there in the late 80s and, you know, had phenomenal deer. Uh, 
know, back then there was still a decent amount of soybeans being grown, not all, you know, pine trees, and uh, mm -hmm. just great whitetail hunting and a lot of fun, a lot of good memories there. So um, you and your daddy are close, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And my dad's, you know, certainly a mentor of mine and a good friend. I think, you know, honestly, dad, when you look at what he's done in business, uh, you know, he grew up, uh, put himself through college. Where did he, did he grew up up there in Marshall County? No, nah, he grew up in Birmingham uh -huh. and uh, graduated from Huffman and uh, then decided he wanted to go to college and uh, put himself through school. How did he get up out of Marshall County? Uh, so he uh, wanted to start a business and um, found out about an opportunity and started a little business then. It was called Steel Processing. And they took railroad and they would chop it up and uh, took railroad just pieces, chop it up with a machine called a rail breaker. And him and his first cousin, a guy named Steve Hayes, um, which that's actually who our son Hayes is named after is Steve. Uh -huh. He died in a car wreck. But they, they would sell the railroad to Mueller down the street. And so it was just a Mueller. You know, Albertville's fire hydrant capital of the world. Did not so, know that. Oh, yeah. If you ever look at oh, the fire. Oh, so Mueller has their plant there. That's in Albertville. In Albertville. And so his little business. Was Is that one took, of the biggest employers up there? Oh, yeah. It's uh -huh. huge. And, uh, I yeah, never knew that. Yeah, big place. And if you go look at a fire hydrant, you know, go it's look at Mueller. it. It's going to say made in Albertville, Alabama. Uh -huh. And uh, so big thing. Well, they take steel and they're going to melt it and make, uh, you know, the fire hydrants. And so dad's business, they started off was, you know, they took rail. They'd ship it down there and Mueller would melt it and you know make fire hydrants. So that's how it started off. They just kept diversifying, you uh -huh. know, into railroad supply, service, you know, they manufacture locomotives. One of the coolest things that I think dad's done with his business, if you remember George Bush, the locomotive that took him when he passed away, that had his, you know, it had uh, they had it designed with his emblem on the side and all that, you know, down to Texas, they built that locomotive. You know, Dad's company, Progress Rail. So, uh -huh. is, is the dad, your daddy's company still in, in business at Progress Rail? And it is, in yeah. So, County? yeah, they they're one of the largest employers in Marshall County, and uh -huh. they're in 31 different states, or maybe more than that now. And so, they got uh, bought out by Caterpillar, and uh, so uh -huh. Caterpillar owns them, but still, you know, big in the railroad. Still, business. Your dad still does the same thing. Yeah. So he uh, he actually stepped down last year as CEO, and then he's got you know just consulting now with them, working with them, and um, you know he's uh, kind of trying to slow down a little to go to some of the kids, you know, ball games, and you know, actually good. get to go with some of the grandkids, uh -huh. and uh, so he's enjoying that. Now, Will, you uh, you've got your own hunting and, and business and everything. Tell me about everybody about your hunting. Your, you got a whole sure. resort type of business. There. Yeah, so um, you know, I've always enjoyed the outdoors, and so out of right out of um, college, I decided I wanted to do something in the outdoor business. So we started a business called Dream Ranch, and uh, it's a commercial hunting and fishing resort. We do deer hunting, quail hunting, bass fishing. Now I got out of that about um, I guess four years ago. I just you know couldn't run out of time, and then yeah. we've been involved in the development business. Uh, real estate business, construction business. And so I've just always been an entrepreneur, still involved in real estate, you know, the rental business, and then also new construction of homes. And so we're doing mm -hmm. that, but the key is having good people. And I've got great people that work with us and that are able to run those businesses. And that allows me to serve as Lieutenant Governor. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, uh, so my background's business. And I really think that helps in politics. I think just understanding finances, understand accounting, understanding budgets, uh, making sure, understanding relationships with people, uh, just you know, finding out how to solve problems, realizing that, you know, that the key to whether it's business or the key to politics, relationships. And so we work hard on building relationships across the state. So, Will, when you were growing up as an athlete and a hunter and everything, and a student in Marshall County. You really didn't think you'd be in politics. You you just thought you'd be in business, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, you didn't like go to Boy State and run for governor, Boy State, and all never that did, stuff. Yeah, all that I kind mean, of stuff, like a lot of us did. All that political yeah. stuff growing up. I mean, we, yeah. You didn't have an idea you were going to be in business, wasn't you? Not at all. I mean, so I was. Uh, yeah, my focus was. Uh, I worked when I was in school, in high school, and then even in college, I worked. You know, at a bank while I was going there, mm -hmm. I was focused on getting my education. You know, probably had a little bit too much fun, like anybody in college, and uh, you know, and then getting out and my focus was getting a you know a degree where I could get a job and provide and so you know my thought process on you know that was um, you know I was in a fraternity you know but would never cared about being an SGA to be honest and that's you know great thing a lot of people want to do it, it just wasn't for me yeah always voted you know uh, every election always you know been a Republican my whole life and uh, but just for me 
I um, never had a desire to serve and then um, you know in politics or be involved and then opportunity came up to run for the house and you know decide to do that so Will, uh, is your wife from up there too? You know, neck of the woods? Yeah, you know, she's not. She's from Tupelo, Mississippi. Yeah, I've asked you that before. That's yeah, right. So yeah, home of Elvis. Did y'all meet at, school, at Auburn? We met at Auburn. Uh huh. Yeah. So I actually met her at a uh, Kyo formal. I uh -huh. was uh, on a date with one of her friends and ran into Kendall. What so return were you in at Auburn? I was a Fiji, Phi uh -huh, Gamma Delta, yeah. and she was a Kyo. Y'all met at a formal? At it? a formal, uh -huh. yeah. So. What year were y'all? Let's see, she was a year younger than me, so I would have been a junior and she was a sophomore. Uh huh. When y'all got married, you say, I'm taking you back to Marshall County? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So we moved back and I uh, lived in Albertville uh -huh. you know, right after we got married. And, uh, you know, it was a little bit different for her from Tupelo, but she loves it now. Let's so. talk about y'all's children. I want to say this on and, and, and tell you this. I've told you this in a column and personally. You've got the finest young boys, and they're twins, aren't they? Yes, sir. They're twins. Anyway, they're the most courteous. Y'all have trained them so well in the church and be, how to be such gentlemen. I never forget, uh, you don't see 11, 10 year old boys. He walked, when you walked over to me one time at the when it was state of the state dress, and they just shook my hand like they were just the perfect little gentleman. This is nice to meet you, Miss Flowers. And then I saw them at that Trump thing the other night. Yeah. And they just, they spoke to me, remember me. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they, they do remember you, yeah. They're the nicest young men I've ever seen in my life. You've got the best two boys. I, I can't, I shouldn't slight your daughters. I'm sure she's beautiful and well-mannered. Oh, yeah. But you've got the most well-mannered, nicest young men's son. Tell our folks about you, y'all. What's your wife's first name? Uh, Kendall. Kendall. Yeah. K-E-N-D-A-L-L. -L. Yeah, that's uh, right. And then, yeah. well, now your boys are what, 11 or 12? Uh, so they're 11. Yeah, uh -huh. and they're in sixth grade, so they uh they're Hunter and Hayes and so Hunter and Hayes playing first year of tackle football. They're loving that. They yeah. like it. Oh man, they love it. And uh, they're little guys now, but they're they're scrappy and like. Are they little for their age? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and they're they're quick though, and they're not afraid to hit. What position they got them playing? So they play a cornerback and safety, and uh -huh. then uh, on they usually start on defense at cornerback and safety. Then on offense, uh, one of them Hayes, the backup running back, and then Hunter backup receiver so are you able to go to the games oh yeah the games are now this is uh so in peewee football the games are on saturday okay so i get to go to most of them well, i've been to all of them but the problem is you our games are at one or two o'clock so it's tough to go i haven't been able to go to an auburn game or an alabama game this year at yeah. all because of their game right yeah does your daddy go with you too he goes to most uh -huh. of them yeah he enjoys it and um it's a lot of fun but they're you know look i mean um obviously first time raising kids but I mean I just raised them the way I was raised and a ton of that goes to my wife she's wonderful and you know one of the nicest people in the world Kendall she's just great but uh you know we should believe in uh, same as us you know when church doors are open we try to have them there uh, we believe in um, you know teaching them to you know right and wrong and if you do wrong there's punishment with that and um, but you know they're good kids, but they also they do good stuff, but also do bad stuff. They got know? good I mean, manners, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, they now, need to be respectful. What about your little girl? What, yeah, uh, so uh, Addie's amazing, and uh, you know she's got a real dynamic personality, and she's real into gymnastics, and so you'll get. Was she in eight or nine? So she uh, Addie just turned ten. She had okay. a birthday, and so, so she ain't far behind those boys. No, nah, uh -huh. she. I think there's about eighteen months between them. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so. You know, we was almost like having triplets. You know, really? Early it on, it was pretty crazy. 18 months different. Yeah, so we had the twin boys first, and then she came along 18 uh -huh. months later. And so, you know, we had three in diapers, which is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, but so her thing is she loves gymnastics and cheerleading. And so That's my perfect. sister cheered at Alabama. So you got to realize we were, an, we were an Auburn family. And then my sister gets a scholarship to cheer at Alabama. And, you know, she married Alabama football player. Did she grew, go to Alabama like you? Yeah, she did. Well, Boaz, yeah. Boaz, so, yeah, uh -huh. grew up there, was a Boaz cheerleader. They were really good. Who and did she marry, the football she player? She married a guy named Clint Johnston, which uh -huh. would have been the tight end. He's from Wetumpka. I remember him, and yeah. Then he, uh, uh -huh. And his dad played for, you know, Bear Bryant. And then, but Clint was the tight end when Brody Crawl was the quarterback. Okay. And, um, you know, good athlete. Uh -huh. And so, so now, fast forward to now, I've got a daughter. Guess where she wants to cheer? Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Uh -huh. So she. You taking your boys down to practice? You know. Yeah. So and uh -huh. we're gonna. Hey, I figure uh, if they're into football, go let them watch the best, right? So we're actually gonna take them to Alabama football practice tomorrow and let them, 
you know, watch Coach Saban. And I've been down there before, and I'll say this, as an Auburn fan, he impresses me with his process, with his attention to detail, with what he expects from his players. And as an athlete, I just have so much respect for him. And I want my boys to see that. And so we're going to go down. They're taking a few of their teammates, and, you know, they better be on their best behavior. Well, we're just going to watch. Saban is going to go down in history as probably the greatest college coach. He's, he's the best, Mayor Bryant. So just them remembering they got to do that and to, to see Coach Saban, that'll be something they'll remember. They'll, when they're your, your age, even my age, they'll tell their people about that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah, I mean, you only get, uh -huh. you know, one opportunity to be a dad. So I uh -huh. want to try to, you know, and you got to be creative and, you know, with politics, schedule and everything. So I try to make it count when I'm with them and try to be involved in their sports. I help coach their stuff. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd be a neat opportunity for me to go watch Alabama's practice. And so they're taking a few of their buddies, get checked out of school a little bit early. They like that. <laughs> And uh, then we'll go down. And but Addie wants to cheer at Alabama. That's her dream, you know. So she's working hard. To That's the gymnastics. You got to do it now. Yeah, it's, it's not like being the prettiest girl in the school anymore. Yeah, no, it's uh, about yeah. Uh, Alabama. They've got a good competitive squad, and they've got all these national cheer competitions. And you know, it's usually Alabama's usually in the top five. They've got one of the best. And you know, Kentucky's another one that's good. And so, Will, now besides a uh, job, lieutenant governor. Uh, presides over the Senate is the primary job. And let me let me say this about that. I've got a lot of good friends who are in the state Senate, and you have really won their respect. That's a great freshman class. It's got Gavan from Huntsville and uh, those three from Baldwin and Mobile. Um, I can't call their names now. There's uh, two, two new Baldwin County senators. Senator Elliott. Elliott and- uh, You got David Sessions from David down there. David Sessions who was in the House. And then Tom Butler came back. Now, Tom and I came yeah. to the house together. Tom Butler. Tom's been around like me a while. Yeah. So he came Good back. Senator. Uh, and Barfoot, Barfoot is on this show once a year. He and Clyde Chambliss. Uh, Both of them doing a great job for this area. They sure are. And, uh, uh, but Barfoot, Barfoot and I are way off kin to each other. Really? You no, know, we're all from this area of the state. My mama's people are from, my family's from Pike County, and that's where I represented in the legislature for a long time, uh, but Pike and Montgomery border, you know, and so I, we, uh, we, uh, uh, Barfoot and I have traced our ancestors back to the Civil War. They oh. went off the Civil War together from uh, yeah. Pike, Pike and Montgomery, almost the same county, Southern Montgomery and yeah. Pike. But that uh, that's a heck of a class, but I never forget old Jabbo and I are best friends, and, and Jabbo and I were sitting around one day talking after you became lieutenant governor, he said, Steve, you know, he brought it up. He said, I've served with a lot of lieutenant governors, but I like that Ainsworth boy. I like yeah. him better than any of them. He, yeah. said, he said, he's taken it. He's learned the rules. He knows the rules. A lot of lieutenant governors sat there and let McDowell Lee just tell them what to do. Right. I mean, they didn't take the take time. Uh, I mean, uh, Beasley and a lot of them just said, well, Mac, what do I do here? You know, right. and, and uh, but you learned the rules. You you also got no Gudger's a good friend of yours. Senator Gudger's Gudger. a good man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think um, a lot of talent. I mean, all those freshmen got a lot of talent. They all yeah. got different areas of expertise. But uh, Garland's from up in you know my part of the woods, yeah. up in Coleman, and you know uh, certainly I think uh, a natural leader. And uh, you know I think he's got potential to do some statewide one day. Um, well, two of my favorites, uh, I will call it really because I've got a lot of readership in their towns in the Coleman Times and the Jasper Daily Mountain Eagle is Greg Reed. Uh, those two, two of my, I got a lot of readership in those two papers and I like to stay in touch with them. But back to the, the other thing besides presiding over the Senate, which you do a good job at, the, you're on almost every commission. What all commissions do you sure. serve on is and you have to go to all, a lot of meetings. You have to be representing the governor a lot of things. and But also, what all commissions are you on? Yeah, so, and I'll say this real quick about presiding. You know, my biggest fear was getting up there not knowing the rules to a T and somebody asking not knowing. So uh -huh. I hadn't studied that much since college, you know, making sure I knew the rules. Pat Harris is certainly good. 
but we practiced and practiced and practiced before we ever went into session to make sure we had it down and went through all the different scenarios because uh -huh. I learn a lot by doing, you know, and so I just, we sat up there and had senators come in and we did mock sessions just to learn. Is that right? Before I ever went in. And well, so, no wonder you, you did it, you right. took it seriously. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I've got to, you know, people wanted us to do it. And so my goal was to be, try to be the most active Lieutenant Governor states had uh -huh. and you know, certainly want to try to be the best and, you know, um, you know, we're going to take it serious. And so then to your point, so what do I serve on? Uh, first, that you know, we worked on hard. It's got a big impact for the military region, right? When you look oh, at no in, question. Uh, River Region here, Montgomery. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm chair of the Military Stability Commission. That's important. It is. And when you look at you know Maxwell here, um, when you look at all the bases in our state, um, just the impact. It's multi-billion-dollar impact. And so our goal was to, we set out to be the most military and veteran-friendly state in the country. And so. Um, we had a whole package of bills. We worked with our um, active and retired generals. Uh, we worked with you know community leaders and had a whole coalition of people. Worked with the mayor here in Montgomery. I worked with the legislature, you know, House and Senate. And proud to say that we ended up passing 10 bills, bipartisan support, which is hard to do. Mm -hmm. And it really is. I mean, you hear about bipartisan, but I mean, we really got it done. And the reason why I think is people realize the importance of our military. They realize that without them, we wouldn't have our freedom. And then they also understand that the impact it has, and we really want to try to be the most military and veteran friendly state. So what did we do? We passed a thing dealing with license reciprocity. And I'm sure if y'all are looking at home, you're like, what is license reciprocity? And that's where if a military family moves here, their spouse can get a job. So maybe they were a teacher, maybe they were a lawyer, maybe they were a doctor or a nurse. Well now they can go into that profession and instead of having to wait six months, eight months to get recertified, they can go right into a job. And so that's called license reciprocity, worked on that. Um, also, you know, with colleges here, I mean, it's expensive. If uh, military families, obviously, especially at Maxwell, they're gonna come in and get trained and move back out. Well, they're gonna come here and they like our universities. You know, I mean, we've got a lot of great colleges here. People come from all over the U.S. Well, if they're in Alabama, we wanna make sure they keep that in-state tuition if they get reassigned. And so we passed a bill that's gonna allow them to keep in-state uh -huh. tuition. And um, sports are important, you know that to me. And so we had an issue where, you know, for instance, if a military family came in, they couldn't, and they transferred a public school, like say they were, lived in Montgomery, but maybe they wanted to go to Prattville or Pike Road. Well then, the Alabama High School Athletic Association was making them sit out a year. Well now we got it where one, they have public school choice, so they can go to a military family and go to another public school, but then they also don't have to sit out a year. That's not considered a transfer. Because the last thing we want to do is penalize a military family. They're just trying to get education for their kid. Uh -huh. That's all they want. And a part, a lot of them, they have some really good kids that have a lot of talent. You know, we want them playing sports, and uh, I believe playing sports keeps people from being bored, which keeps them out of trouble. Yeah. And uh, so that was a big thing. Uh, we've got a charter school that's going to be uh, located on uh, next to the base in Montgomery that's gonna be the first aerospace specific charter school in the country. And that's gonna be for military families. Once you know they use it, then it'll allow people from the community to go. So it's a big deal. So that, mm -hmm. that's some of the bills we worked on with the uh, military families. And uh, you know that's a big impact here in Montgomery. Well, I'm glad to see you doing that and taking an interest in that because like you said, and, and I don't know, most Alabamians don't really think about it, but if you took the military bases out of Alabama, beginning with Redstone, Arsenal, Huntsville, Maxwell, Gunner here in Montgomery, and uh, uh, Fort Rucker and the Wiregrass. It, you don't, people just can't comprehend the, the, the importance, uh, especially, uh, you've watched this grow up all your life, what, being in the shadow of Huntsville. What's happened in Huntsville, and what is gonna happen the rest of your life in Huntsville, it is a story of, of, of my lifetime. Yeah. I mean, the last 30 years expansion of Huntsville, Alabama, it, it, the, the population and all, everything's north of Montgomery now in Alabama. I mean, it's like, you know, um, and the real portion will, re will reflect that when you get down to it. But you've watched that, that expansion of Huntsville. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, so when you look at, you know, the Huntsville area, uh, you know, I'm national chair of the Aerospace States Association, another area okay. I'm involved in. And appreciate the leading question. I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know. <laughs> But when you look at it, Space Command, to your point, will have an impact on Alabama for 100 plus years. And us landing that, that was based on merit. 
we only had, Alabama only had three areas, and AL.com did a good article on this, that listed where we were deficient, right? And one of those was licensed reciprocity. But guess what? We fixed it. Uh -huh. The next closest state was Colorado, and they had 10 areas. Colorado was close to 17. So the reason Alabama got Space Command was because the cost of business was cheaper, because of the workforce we had, because of you know the cost of construction. So we got it based on merit. And so what we're trying to do is continue to make our business climate the best, continue to work on things like the license reciprocity issue to make it easy for military families and their spouses to get jobs. Uh, cost of living here is cheaper than Colorado. So we're gonna continue to win against these other states. And when you look at aerospace, you know, here's something interesting. I was sitting down with a CEO of a company and you know, he said, Will, when you look at aerospace and defense and the fact that if another country, let's just look at China, all right, or, or Russia, right? If they wanted to take out our assets in space, right, and they all of a sudden started shooting rockets and taking out our GPS, our satellites, what that would do to our day-to-day -day life would be catastrophic. So Space Command, which is what in Huntsville, it's going to monitor all that. And then Space Force is the attack part. So Space Command in Huntsville will be monitoring what's going on. And then if somebody decides to attack, Space Force will you know, send the rockets to you know, intercept uh -huh. the rockets. Well, guess where all that's being made? Right here in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so you know, we are defending the world. Well, guess what? Federal money from defense is going to pour in not only the defense industry, but the aerospace, because a lot of our wars in the future are going to be fought protecting our space assets, not necessarily on ground. Mm -hmm. And Alabama is the capital of the world in aerospace. And so my job as national chair of the Aerospace States Association, it's an easy job, is go sell Alabama. That's easy. I mean, we've mm -hmm. got the best people. We've got, we're already known for the aerospace capital. We can beat them in cost. And so I love going out selling Alabama because I hate losing worse than anything. <laughs> and uh, so it's fun to me to represent our state in that industry and go out and sell Alabama. It's, uh, I'm honored to get to do that. Well, you're doing a great job. I hate to tell you, well, our time's up. He goes by in a hurry. I'm glad we got those commissions you're on, and people were aware of that too, besides presiding over the Senate. And uh, folks, our guest tonight has been a very popular uh, statewide official in our state, Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth, who is uh, s serving, finishing up his first four-year term as Lieutenant Governor. And by the way, he and all the other constitutional officers are up for re-election. He's running for re-election in the May 24th primary. and. Uh, one of the best young uh, leaders in our state I've ever seen, and also a great family man, and is doing a great job as Lieutenant Governor. And we thank Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth for being on our show, and we thank you viewers for watching. Hope you tune again next week for Alabama, Alabama politics. Thank you. Good job.